so Beth, I, I started the recording. Um, if we're mostly here, I think we can uh, get going anytime. Yeah, okay, I think that's great. Um, well, welcome everyone. Thanks to Keith for um, setting us up and sharing the slides and getting Adobe working. And thanks to everyone for attending, even though it's middle of the night, uh, all kinds of crazy hours for everyone. We really appreciate it. Uh, it might help people to, if they post in the chat, um, who they are and where they're from, in case we have some new folks here. And we have an agenda, but we're an informal group, so we can feel free to uh, add to this or change this as we need to. Um, why don't we get started um, with an update from Pratt. Gail is going to be, um, welcome Gail, and Gail's going to be sharing um, a little bit about what Pratt is doing with ePortfolios. And um, I'm so excited personally to um, hear more from Gail. Um, just want everyone to know Pratt was one of the original schools that we reached out to when we adopted Mahara and some of Gail's uh, her predecessor and some of her current colleagues were very helpful to us when we got started. So with that, I'll turn it over to Gail. Okay. Um, I was wondering, can is there a way I can share my um, ePortfolio page with you? Share my screen, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Gail, you have presenter rights, so I stopped the uh, screen sharing of the agenda. So you should see a share my screen option now, right in the middle. Uh, yeah. on, on the big share. Yeah, I'm, I just, I'm just downloading. Oh, right. You'll have to download the, the plugin. If Gail needs time to do that, we you know we could jump to another item on the agenda. So let me know, Gail, what's best for you. Gail, what's best for you? Uh, Beth, your slides are loaded up. I think you were next on the agenda. If you want to go first, yeah, while uh, Gail. Yeah. If if that help is helpful to Gail, that's fine with me. Whichever is better for her. Did we lose you, Gail? So I'll um, just type in maybe. Um, I'm I'm loading your slides up then, Beth, okay. and you should yeah. have control for uh, con you know um, the controls for moving through. Okay. So, except I was taking a look and uh, there. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm sorry. We we couldn't hear you. Yep. Okay, that's all right. Where well, I'm going to go ahead, but then you know. This way it gives you time to get set up. Okay, I'm um, going to share some um, PACE updates with you, but this is going to cover a couple of the topics as well. Um, and um, I'm so glad Roger is here um, because um, I was delighted to find out that this wasn't an issue for PACE alone. But um, even though we've had a great deal of success using ePortfolios with Mahara, we're in our fourth year of implementation university-wide. and uh, jumping off in many exciting ways, but also hitting some stumbling blocks along the way. And one of the stumbling blocks has been usability. And I'd be real interested to hear either um, through the audio or through the chat box if this has been an issue um, facing other institutions. Um, but I, I think it's a it's an interesting thing about Mahara. It's like what we love about Mahara, how good it is for ePortfolios, is also a bit of the challenge that there's so many um, places to go and so many areas to get hung up in. And we were having a, an issue where we were doing lots of training sessions led by um, our talented Sam Egan and a, a small army of student interns. And they were doing great workshops for students and faculty at the beginning of the semester. But no matter how great the workshop, uh, there would be this drop off where the students would go back to their work later in the semester, and they would not know how to go in and upload a file 
or they would make a grady portfolio and would forget the permission setting step. So we tried to tackle this um, at the beginning of the semester, and we've had some conversations with Roger and the British Sam, as we like to call her, his colleague, and it seems like they're battling the same issue. And this is how we've decided to, to start addressing it, though I don't think it's um, a finished topic for us. And um, yeah, it'd be great if Roger would chime in here too and, and um, share what they're doing. But we tried tackling our main, our landing page. Um, and you see the before and after. We tried to do like a Mahara makeover um, of our main page. You know, in the beginning when we started with ePortfolio, we felt like we had to do a lot of promotion of what is ePortfolio and why should you use it. And now when you look at web pages for a lot of different tools, Dropbox and Google and lots of other places, it's very sparse. There's a clear direction. I think as Roger said at one point, you know, there should be kind of one objective per, per page. It should just be very clear. So we tried to really pare down and we still have a thumbnail viewer um, that we kind of adapted that concept for Pratt, by the way. They had a nice uh, viewer of about nine tiles, at least initially. I'll be curious to see what they have now. We still have that thumbnail viewer, but it's on our logged out page. So that way people who um, are just visiting us or haven't yet created their own portfolio can see some best samples. But um, now our new landing page has these two big green buttons, which you can't miss. And we're, we're really hoping, um, we've been trying to track number of hits on these two pages, and really hoping the main thing we want students to be able to do is create and share. Now, of course, all of us in ePortfolio land know that reflection is key here. And so we, we battled with this internally, you know, whether it should be create, reflect, share, or, um, you know, some other word to catch that reflection piece. But we really wanted to go for simple, and we're hoping with more simplicity comes um, higher usage and more satisfied usage. And so this is what we have at this point. So we'd love to get the group feedback and find out if this is something you're tackling in your institutions as well. Oh, and I think thanks to Roger. I won't click out now because I might change the, the presentation here, but we'll love to check out that link and see your cleaner login page too. And we think this is just the beginning of the conversation. We'd like to push the conversation through Mahara too. And, and uh, hopefully, with Christina's help, maybe influence um, future versions of Mahara to really um, focus on clear navigation and make it easier for that first-time user. Um, we didn't change any functionality of Mahara by doing this. We're just trying to make it clear for that early ePortfolio adopter. Um, in a similar fashion, another topic somewhat related is we've been trying to uh, increase our students' understanding of what makes good design. I mean, we know a good ePortfolio when we see it. And um, again, in the early days, we were, um, oh, Keith, I, I see your question. He, Sam's here with me too. Do you want to answer? Everyone. I don't know if you want to answer that one. Um, when they click the Create button, they go directly to the edit mode of their introduction page. So we thought if it was a new user that the introduction page would be the best place for them to start because that face on our template, we have some boxes um, just to give them ideas like goals and overall reflections and skills. So we wanted to prompt them right there. Good question, Keith. Um, so we wanted to help our students. Um, again, in the early days of ePortfolio adoption at Pace, we were just focused on getting students to upload content, get them to upload content and understand reflection and get it all in there. And now I feel like as we're maturing, we're trying to get them to um, think more carefully about design and layout and making a strong impression, balancing text and images. And again, we've been trying to do some makeovers with our students' ePortfolios and our eTerns did some creative work of some before and after pages. And so we're starting to do some workshops on design. And I think some students do this naturally, but I know from just grading some of my students' ePortfolios from this semester, um, some of them have great content in there, but they'll have one column that goes on forever and forget that at the other side of the page, it's very lopsided. So I think it's something that all students could use some help with and good practical skills for them and then makes better ePortfolios for us. And then just some general updates about um, our ePortfolio work at Pace. Um, I don't know, Sam, do you want to update on the content? Sure. We were really happy to see that um, we had an uptick in the number of submissions that we received. We received um, a good amount, and we were able to pick out about, um, I think it's six winners. 
um, across both of our campuses, both grad and undergrad. Um, and it was ironic that um, in the Pleasantville campus, two of our winners were the layout editors of the student paper, just going back to that design techniques, just that they know what makes an e-portfolio look really well laid out. Uh, but we were happy to honor them at the awards, and we were happy to hear what they had to say about creating their e-portfolio. We had a couple of students say that at first they didn't really understand it, but um, they ended up coming around full circle and winning the contest. So it was great to see that they've become e-portfolio believers along with the rest of us. And this is a topic I'd like to uh, suggest for our, uh, an upcoming mug meeting. I think about two years ago, we did a virtual student showcase. And I'd love to see us do that again. Um, I don't know if any of you were part of that. I believe Christina was, and Keith, of course. Um, but basically, we, you know, because of the time difference and everything, we knew it was challenging. But we each selected a couple of uh, winners. It didn't have to be formal winners, but just outstanding samples. And we had we created we created or they created lecture captures, kind of narrating their e-portfolio or the process of their e-portfolio, short clips, about three minutes, and then we each shared a couple we were proud of as the meeting. I thought it was really nice. And um, of course, we could try another format as well or see if we could get some students to join us, <laughs> find the best time to do that. But I think it's great to keep students as part of this. Um, and we do have, um, I don't know if I, could, if I click on, Keith, if I click on the link, will it take? Yeah, I think if everyone will click on it. I'm not sure if you're all seeing our e-portfolio blog. Are uh, you? Beth, if you click on the link on your slide, uh, it'll open that up in your browser, but you're not sharing your screen. You're sharing the document, so no one would see it. Okay, so I have to do that, right? Um, Did you want to share your screen instead of the document? Um, I was going to show, I guess I'm trying to think about that. I was going to show one of our students. Um, yeah, I think that would be nice. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to do this. Um, I want to give us, you know, because I think it's nice to include students in this. So let me, I apologize. I should have, uh, let me try to. Looks like it's loading. Okay. You all see my screen or? Uh, it's coming up on my uh, connection. It might take a little while to populate out to everyone. Okay. Can you all see this, or? Yep, I do. You're on our ePortfolio blog? Uh, you're scrolling through the blog, looks like? Yep, yep. OK, sorry about that. Um, OK, great. Yeah, this is our uh, this is our ePortfolio blog, which is at ePortfolio.blogs.pace.edu. And Sam does a super job coordinating this. And um, I just wanted to highlight um, one of our students uh, a communications major who um, just got his first full-time position and he wrote to all of his faculty yeah. crediting his e-portfolio for distinguishing him in a very competitive uh, New York City metro area <laughs> market and he really recognized that um, you know he, he was able to stand out in the crowd uh, through his e-portfolio so I thought that was interesting we've been promoting his story with um, our key stakeholders and other students around case and I thought it was worthwhile to share with this group um, because I think when it's when we talk about e-portfolio usage um, it's you know at pace we're often defined in terms of the numbers how many people are using e-portfolio how many hits how many blogs etc but I think that this type of um, qualitative feedback um, true success stories is also very very powerful and important for us to um, to share and communicate Okay, um, let's see. Where Beth? Yeah. Maybe d during our summer meeting, um, we might have a little bit more time and maybe we could talk about uh, what everyone's doing to promote ePortfolios on their campus, sh share some ideas, maybe leave with some action plans for all of us to make some progress on our individual campuses based on the feedback we get from each other. 
Oh, that's a great idea. And in fact, you know, we're we're always mulling over what would be good topics for this group and some even though our schools and settings are so vastly different but um trying to figure out those common themes such as uh promotion of e-portfolio i'm sure we could all share a lot of great ideas so that's a good one and thanks to those of you who are posting in the comments while i'm trying to share screens i wasn't following that so just let me know if there's any questions we should be answering i want to go back to the slides um Okay. Are you, oh, I think, can you get them back? Okay. Nope, okay. wrong one. So, um, Sorry. Yeah, I think the other update we wanted to share, um, just two other updates um, that, that together. We're finishing up our Catalyst to Learn um, grant, which um, is a, has been a three and a half year project with 23 other institutions across the United States who are who have all been researching um, what needs to be involved in university-wide e-portfolio projects. It's been a terrific um, experience for us. We've learned a lot from the partner institutions. Sadly, uh, only Empire State is the only other Mahara user in the group, even though we've, we've, <laughs> we've certainly done our best to promote Mahara. And um, for those of you who are interested and you uh, go to that Catalyst site, it's a great repository for all things e-portfolio, and a lot of it is platform agnostic that would be helpful to everyone. But if you look at our technology story, it's about our implementation from our bucket list to arriving at Mahara and making Mahara what we what it is for us today. So um, that might be of interest to this group as well. And um, it's a great repository of all kinds of assignments and strategies for using portfolios. And the way we're starting to use it with our faculty is you know, if we meet a math department faculty member who wants to know, well, how can e-portfolios be used in math, we can search that Catalyst site and find sample assignments um, from other schools, but in their particular in that particular discipline. So, um, oh, thanks, thanks, Keith, thanks for sharing the URL. Um, yeah, that's the, Keith shared the pace um, the pace page of that, which is terrific. But then I encourage you to explore the other schools' pages as well. Um, and there's a lot of great. Um, Essays written by the you know are the true e-portfolio leaders in the field, um, uh, Brett Einon and Randy Bass and um, you know lots of the, the LaGuardia team and um, people from Able like Trent Batson. So you'll recognize some names and faces in the in the work there. So I encourage you to check it out. And because of our work in that in that grant, um, it's led to uh, our next research vent venture, which we're embarking on with some colleagues from the University of Notre Dame. And they're doing some really exciting work with ePortfolios and learning analytics and data mining. And so what we're doing with them is we're following up on some of the retention analysis we've done with ePortfolio, where we've seen that ePortfolio users um, are more highly retained than non-ePortfolio users. And although we can't show cause and effect, um, it's some nice correlation uh, showing that those students who are um, creating e-portfolios are more connected with faculty, they're more likely engaged in other high-impact practices, and um, they're performing, um, higher is not the right word, but showing more satisfaction on uh, Nessie survey uh, results, which for our international friends, I'm not sure if Nessie is a term you're familiar with, but um, U.S. schools use this uh, national sur survey for student engagement as a measure of how you know highly engaged um, students are. And so um, we're really excited about this. We're looking at um, doing data mining for reflections to pick up themes and trends and basically be able to um, offer some predictive analysis based on students' um, activity with any portfolio early on in the semester and early on in their college career to be able to determine if, if there's um, uh, patterns there or ways we can intervene if students are at risk. So stay tuned for more <laughs> on those topics. And let's see, what else do we have here? And finally, I just wanted to um, mention that, uh, for those of you that don't know, we are we did have our panel presentation accepted at um, ABLE this summer. We're thrilled about it and, of course, hope that all of you will join us um, in one way or another. And um, Christina and Gail and um, Roger were all part of this, uh, putting this proposal together. And basically, we were pleased to be able to get one of the longer sessions. We an interact, interactive session. 
And our goal is to each present on kind of some of our highlights, but then also try to engage the audience in talking about Mahara and kind of, you know, common themes or issues or projects we're all working on. So hopefully this can be the springboard for lots of um, mug work, um, both at ABLE and after ABLE. We also probably want to try to do um, lunch together or probably a meetup at a Starbucks or something like that. So I guess as soon as any of you know whether you're planning on attending ABLE, if you could send me an email and we'll try to coordinate some meetings in addition to our presentation. And um, I'm hoping that Roger and Sam will be able to if not Skype in, then perhaps share a video link or some notes or some slides so that they're, they join us um, in, this, <laughs> in this presentation. And um, any, uh, any um, comments or questions or interest in our mug meetup at ABLE? Uh, Christina, thanks for sharing that presentation. Um, yeah, that uh, I think Roger, maybe Roger had shared that PWIC uh, information with me too. Yeah, it's, def it's definitely something I'm going to have to um, check out a little bit more. Thank you for sharing those links. So, Beth, when you're talking about doing analytics on general reflections, um, what tools are you planning to use? And, and clearly, these must be uh, journal reflections that have been added to portfolio pages that have been then shared, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're um, we're trying to do this as carefully as possible. We're looking at historical data, um, not a current semester. We went through our IRB process, and um, we're still developing what we, you know, how we plan to do it. But of course, the students will be. Um, students' identities will be hidden, but we do want to connect the dots and be able to look at reflections and then base re retention and performance. So it's still unfolding, but if you have any suggestions, Keith, <laughs> we would definitely welcome them. Well, I, I was just thinking that you know, since much of the journaling can be going on privately within the students' accounts, and we really kind of hit that point that you know, you, nothing is really available until the students specifically share it. I wonder if there's a way to to do any kind of analytics or predictive modeling on on that activity before it it surfaces at all, because that seems like where you'd want to to know what's going on uh, is is when is what they're doing actually before they're they're sharing anything. Yeah. Have you thought about that, or, or how you how you might uh, how you might uh, attack that? Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not sure that no, we're not entirely sure about that yet. We've been working a little bit more on the number of hits, number of artifacts, that kind of concrete right. information. That's a little bit less um, sensitive, I guess. Yeah. And the question you're asking is an excellent one. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to tackle that. Um, it, it's a it's certainly a good question. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe there's others out there. I mean, our colleagues at Notre Dame, they're, they're doing some of this, so we're hoping they're going to be able to advise us, and maybe we can find some other good models to, to follow. Um, but if there's nothing else, um, and if Gail's ready, I don't, I'm watching her okay, time. Um, Perhaps we can, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Oh, good. Okay. Um, I'm really thrilled with what you're doing, Beth. I, I think that you're um, a step ahead of where I want to be in terms of, of looking, evaluating the, the e-portfolio. Uh, it sounds like the, the uh, way that your, your contest, or just the way you're involved and have the e-portfolio integrated into your institution is something that I'm looking forward to doing. Um, I can show you on my screen. I, I don't really have a much of a, whoops. <laughs> can you see that now? Uh, that's our landing page. Uh, Gail, you're not, you're not sharing your screen yet. Not, okay. 
Hang on. You see that uh, share my screen? There, uh, now it's coming up. Okay. Here we go. Um, yeah. It'll take a, uh, take a minute. There it is. Okay. So, um, gee, no, I lost our conversation. Okay. I think if I do put this on top. All right. So you can... Oops, I think I just closed it. I'm really just learning how to use this system, so I apologize. I hope I'm not making people seasick. Um, um, I had our landing page here. Out. So I, I just wanted to show you, this is, I, I mean, I feel like I'm, it's my presentation, but it's really should be Christina and my presentation. <laughs> um, this is the work we did with Catalyst to create uh, a new look and feel to our e-portfolio. Um, and... Uh, That's our login page, so I'll just All right. Um, Nancy Seidler is with me, and she's the director of our um, intensive English program. Uh, so she'll just be speaking on my computer. So can you all see that? Yes. She's just logged in. Okay, great. I, I'm, I'm going to keep asking because I'm really not used to Adobe Connect, but I'm getting used to it as, with these meetings. So I, I'm sorry. I just walked in the room. You can't see that I did, but I just <laughs> snuck in. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what you're up to, but we are really excited about the new upgrade um, that Mahara has uh, delivered for us because um, it allows us to really clarify what it is that we expect of our students in the ePortfolio and gives them much easier access to um, be able to jump in without having to figure out how to do it. It's much, much more user-friendly. So I'm going to show you um, a comparison of what we had before this semester um, and what we have now. So let me see if I can access a student's work. So um, I'm just clicking one at random. Um, this is our old format for the ePortfolio. We're the Intensive English Program, and so that means that we're looking at students' English language skills. They're non-native English speakers, and they're working on um, reading, writing, speaking, and listening in an art and design context. Um, in the past, students had to build this template from scratch each time. Um, we had them build um, these several columns that you can see and squish in as best they could a reflection about that skill um, and then add their artifacts below it, which always um, sort of ended up being this um, hard to access from the, uh, from the instructor's standpoint and hard to build from the student standpoint kind of a kind of a format. So that's the old and our new format is really exciting. Oh no, what did I do? Uh, let me just, just here we go. So uh, let me go back to my home page. And let's take a look at the new template. Um, uh, nope, sorry. This is 2013. I need a 2014. Um, yeah, the students aren't in the group. So let me try and um, 
No. No. Oh. I'm going to play around on another computer um, to try and get a student information up here. Uh, unless I can find one really quickly. Okay, good, here we are. So um, we've, we have built a template, and that template allows us to create these different pages that students can copy and um, give us a much more clear um, um, view of what it is that they've done in their, in their, um, in their skills. So we've included, among those things, instructions for what it is that they need to include. And then students basically fill in the sections that have been created for them. They still have um, the flexibility to um, alter it as they'd like, but they're not required to, and they don't have to do anything special to get the kind of um, um, information on that they want to. So in our programs, we have students do a lot of visual work and they give presentations and get critiques on their work, and that's all in the mix of what it is that they're able to include in their portfolio in a way that makes it really easy for us to access. So again, each page has its own set of instructions. We love this little doohickey that lets us open and close those yeah, instructions, and um, I think that gives you an idea of what we're up to. So are you sharing the, the template as a shared collection or individual pages that are copyable? Um, I think we're sharing it as a shared collection. Um, the person who is the most hands-on with it isn't here right now. But he's created the collection, shared it, and then they copy it. They copy the collection and, um, and use it as their own template. In the temp I, I'm not sure if I can, let me see if I can get the actual template because this, the students go in and then they remove some of, our, um, some of our information as they include um, their information. Because I think, uh, I think at Purchase we probably should start focusing more on developing various templates for different courses, different programs, and it would be nice to, maybe if we could have a library of template ideas that would be useful across our, our campuses. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, Keith, we could do that easily on the wiki, I would say, because you can just export a collection or a page and then maybe just briefly explain what's in there and then somebody else can import it into their own Mahara instance. And from Mahara 1.8 on, you can import it directly into an existing portfolio so you wouldn't even create a new account. So probably oh, nice. kind of set, be setting up a new template user or so that stores all the templates could be a possibility. Nice. So um, that's sort of the, the best view of, of what some of the things that are going on here. And um, I'm hoping that this summer some of you can be coming out here in person and we can get together in Brooklyn.
Thanks so much, Gail and Nancy. That was really great. Just, I mean, as always, you're, <laughs> you do great work there, and looks like you made a big leap forward um, with your ePortfolio project. So congratulations on that. Thank you. And I think some of the ideas of what Keith was suggesting along the same lines, you know, we had as an agenda item creating a joint Mahara promotional video or, you know, trying to have maybe a little bit more of a web presence to communicate what we're doing. And we have the Facebook page, which works out great. You know, we're up to, I think, 160 people on that. But maybe we could look to put something together. Um, you know, and again, maybe it's around the student showcase idea. Maybe we make a little montage of some <laughs> some of our sample e-portfolios. Maybe that would tell our mug story in a kind of a video way. But it might be good to brainstorm some of those ideas too. Yeah, Roger, um, <laughs> that would be great. I see that you. Um, if you'd like to share that, I, that would be terrific. I know we have on here um, upgrades 1.8, 1.9. If um, Christina, is there anything else you wanted to share about either upgrades? Since we'll we'll all be a lot of us will be uh, going down that road shortly if we're not already. Um, maybe just very briefly, Beth. Um, the if you are already on 1.8, I think the upgrade to 1.9 will not really be a huge deal because we did not make as many changes as we did between 1.7 and 1.8. So the, the icons and everything still looks the same. And um, the theme did only get some tweaks and, and bug fixes, but not really any major overhaul. So any of the 1.8 to 1.9 upgrade, uh, upgrades should be fairly smoothly. Of course, always depending on whether you have third-party plugins or how much you customized your uh, instances. Um, we did put a number of new features in there. And um, as I said in the chat, I'll hopefully be finishing the, the remaining ones pretty soon. But you can already take a look at uh, what's new in Mahara 1.9. So we had new features in regards to the um, just regular portfolio use, but also for um, multi-institution sites, uh, so that you can now also have an institution dashboard, and not just one dashboard for the entire site. And that can be very interesting, though not actually only for multi-institution sites, but also for those where you may want to have one institution for alumni and one institution for your regular students and staff, or one for students, another for staff, so that you can also customize these um, individual pages uh, like the dashboard and have different focus points for them, so that your alumni see something different, see a different dashboard image uh, than your regular students, and so on. So there's some quite exciting work in 1.9. But um, we believe that 1.10 will be actually, again, a bigger Mahara um, installation because uh, Totra LMS is working quite heavily on, some in, on a number of improvements and also new features. And uh, those will be focused um, a lot of times on social interactions. So for example, an activity stream or also um, potentially better sharing possibilities and also sharing on an artifact level so that you, for example, don't need to put a journal always in a page so that you can also give somebody access to an individual file without having to put into a page and so on. So that, um, some of that work is already in progress, so we, we still need to look how it's eventually going to be implemented, but you're very welcome to always um, log into the review system or join in any conversation specification discussions that are going on on the um, on the forums. And uh, Beth, right now we are actually thinking of still calling it Mahara 1.10. Haven't really thought of Mahara 2.0, but maybe that numbering system is going to change at some point. Um, so maybe we will see about that. But right now we are calling it 1.10. And that is projected to be out in mid-October, so after about uh, six months after the 1.9 release. 
And so we are really excited about really, really um, the, all the features that are going to be in there. And we'll see that we get as many of them in there until the feature freeze so that everybody can also benefit from them then. Oh, sorry. And that's that's pretty much all for me. If you have any questions, shoot, please just let me know. But also, I think right now we only have about 15 minutes until the official end. So maybe either looking at some of Roger's things or looking at the other items of the agenda would be great as well. Yeah, th thanks so much, Christina. I just want to make sure we had time for you in there. But yeah, if, if Roger, if you're still willing, if we could turn it over to you, it would be great um, to have you show uh, the contextual help button or anything else with the group. Hey, can you uh, hear me? Yes. Okay, hi. Um, let me just press lots of buttons to get the uh, screen sharing going. There's only one thing I really wanted to show. Um, it's Oops, I think he might have lost Roger in, while he was trying to share the screen. I can't see him in the list of um, people anymore. Oh, there he is. Oh, sorry, can you hear me again? Um, I, got, I got booted for some reason. Um, let me just attempt to share my screen again. Um, share my whole desktop. Um, can you see um, my screen now? Yes, Roger. Right. Um, just just looking at the screen, I'm on the CV builder, and this is something we did a long time ago. The little contextual help CV builder resume for those who haven't changed the language pack. Um, the little contextual icon there, the help icon. Uh, quite a long time ago, we changed this, so I don't know if you can see that there, I'm just highlighting it, um, little box that comes up. Um, we sort of worked through some of the functions quite a long time ago to change it, so it's sort of more about using it, not which button to press or no press next or whatever, those sort of instructions, but much more how to write your CV, for instance. Um, and these got links to our career service and so on in there. Um, what we sat the other day and looked at this and said, hang on, there's something built in the system there that's going to be very useful. Why don't we use core code, these to upgrade and, and so on. Um, so what we're looking at is changing that little tiny icon into something a little bit more bigger and bolder, which was something we talked about before. And we're not sure what it's going to be called yet, but something like what do I do here and what do I do next? And try and answer those questions in the box. And the box may even include, include video. We're, we're just sort of looking at uh, what we can put in there and how much space it's going to take up. But a little bit more of what have I got to do here? And if it's in a particular context, what do I do next with some links? You know, share the page, add it to a collection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but try and do that within the built-in code base, just using the help and making it very, very rich, and just changing that one icon. And what we talked about before was putting lots of uh, maybe wizard type buttons at the bottom of the screen of you now, next, back, and those sort of things, which make it very, very linear. Um, that was basically all I wanted to share was that idea that um, we, we wanted to sort of, um, you know, do that sort of thing. And we've still got to do some work. And I've got, got it on 1.9 on the dev server at the moment that I'm playing with. I'll just un unshare that. So just throwing that there for everyone. Much, Roger. That was that's exactly the same kind of thing we're trying to do, and um, I'm I'm interested in that as well as you know Pratt's idea of kind of putting instructions right on the page. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, combination of both might might help some of our usability issues. <laughs> it's tough. I feel like we go back and forth between trying to make it a very sparse, clean-looking page, and then try you know also trying to load it up with all kinds of help. So we're kind of uh, this torn between the two, and um, but it's great to be able to see what other schools are doing. Yeah, we need to do both. 
exactly. Okay, so um, we have a, just a, a few more minutes, and I'm not sure what is most interesting to the group to discuss. Um, I guess I will defer to the group. I put a couple of suggested topics. We could um, discuss more about uh, getting together at ABLE or some other time in the summer, our next mug meeting, trying to find out from the group when that would be, uh, when would be good for everyone. Do we want to try to do some sort of student showcase slash meet up Brooklyn and online? And um, do we want to try to create something together as a mug group, a video or a a showcase of some student portfolio, something like that. Thoughts from the group? Ed, would oh, it be wait. possible for you to show the um, slide you had with the topics for the ABLE panel? Oh, sure. Yeah, maybe these might be. Yeah, these were some preliminary topics, um, but we, you know, we can certainly add others or change these. Um, we presented as a mug panel, I think, two years ago at ABLE, and I think what was helpful is for each of us to kind of share a little bit about our Mahara, our Mahara instance, and um, but also certainly, you know, the group is it's a pretty sophisticated e-portfolio crowd that attends ABLE each year, and the group is certainly growing in knowledge and understanding of e-portfolio. So it certainly doesn't have to be limited to just the platform, but also kind of issues about use and implementation. Um, the group is very much interested in assessment, um, even though, you know, we've, we've all talked about our challenges with Mahara and the assessment piece, but um, it'll, it will also be interesting to see who might attend and try to have somewhat of a conversation with people in the room as well. Gail, did you want to kind of add any other suggestions to our list of topics? It might be neat if we put together, you know, maybe a slideshow with a bunch of Mahara student samples from all of our institutions, and we could kind of have that play, you know, <laughs> play for the group right before the presentation or send people links to it afterwards. That might be nice. It would also be good to talk about some of the issues. Um, it would be nice to get feedback um, on things that we're hitting up against. I remember the last assessment conference I went to, people were really talking about problems as well as, you know, um, what what they felt that they had accomplished. Yep, that that would be great. That would be great if you want to. Um, uh, Sam Egan is you know helping us to coordinate our panel for the summer. So um, Gail, I think we added you in, but we may have added you in after we put together our our description. So maybe um, if, I, if you don't mind, maybe you could send us a little description and we can make sure to yeah. get that added in. I mean, we haven't really figured it out, but I'm, mm -hmm. I just, um, I think this is so helpful having this, this forum and um, just wanted to toss out an idea and see what other people thought of it. <clears throat> Oh, I see Roger has shared. Thanks, Roger. That looks helpful. I will have to browse through that afterwards. That looks that looks good. I think Gail, yeah, I think you're on the right track. I mean, I think as part of our presentation, if if It'd be great to have some some discussion questions. I think we did promise that that it would be interactive, and so our presentations about our individual instances could be will be on the brief side, and then perhaps this is one of our discussion questions that we can um, launch out to the group and um, 
you know, the beauty of MUG is it doesn't, you know, even if we run short on time, hopefully it's a conversation we can continue um, online through Facebook or at our, at our next meeting. Yeah, I, th I think it'll be great to have um, this conversation or this, this group of people and to have an audience with them and see who, could, who we could pull in. <laughs> right. And Definitely. That's great. That's great. Well, and the subgroup of us that are doing the presentation, I think we have a meeting coming up this month, so perhaps we could talk more about that. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Keith, um, I absolutely agree with your <laughs> last comment there. The more we can show Mahari supporting assessment, the less push for assessment platform. That really worries me a bit um, because we have, you know, we have a pace, even though we've made great progress with Mahara, we did have another e-portfolio tool pop up because of the assessment issue. So we definitely would like to see ways for Mahara to tackle assessment so that we don't have these other other platforms running alongside. I feel like I'm behind in that um on that issue and that you guys have really talked about this and I'm just coming into consciousness about it. Is there something I can read online that would catch me up or does anyone, can anyone give me a summary of, of what this, um, you know, the, the institutional assessment piece versus um, the individual learning piece? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think the, the issue is that, you know, many of us chose Mahara because of its strengths, you know, that it's a great, you know, individual presentation, teaching and learning e-portfolio. It looks great. It's very robust. But a, a lot of institutions are coming at e-portfolios with a more of a data assessment mindset, and especially schools of education. And so what's happening is there's this tension where, you know, in, you know at Pace, we, we like to say portfolios can do it all, teaching and learning, career development, assessment, et cetera. But when you do this, it does it all approach, it doesn't quite do it all equally well. And so, um, so the challenge is trying to do it well enough so that you don't, don't risk having parts of your institution branch off. Um, to try to get into other tools because then it weakens the whole thing. And, and from an IT perspective, it's very hard to support multiple tools. And from a student perspective, it's kind of silly to be involved in multiple e-portfolio platforms. Oh, so, yeah. No, I, I, I remember I'm sorry, go ahead. Before, I was, before I was at Pratt and when I was at Manhattanville and we were looking at task stream and education and there was a whole lot of them, um, you know, that was definitely an issue. Um, it's less of an issue for us here, but I would love to get the institution into using Mahara for some kind of assessment. Are you guys doing that at all? I mean, we're trying to. Um, you know, we have a couple of challenges trying to do this with Mahara. I mean, first of all, we don't seem to be able to do this at the course level in Mahara. We're doing the, the research that we have been doing, we've been doing at the student level. Um, and uh, we've been doing some preliminary, as I mentioned, some preliminary retention uh, work. But some schools that are using, you know, Digication, for example, I'm sure you've heard a lot of people, um, you know, the kind of assessment they're able to do with a system like that is more robust than we seem to be able to do with Mahara. Yeah. Can I, can I break in for a second? This is, this is Nancy talking. Um, I, I'm a little confused because um, because you're talking about assessment as being a difficult thing to accomplish with Mahara, but we found for our program that it's supporting our assessment mechanism um, really, really well. And one of the things that we're doing at Pratt is as we're looking, um, we're, we're uh, at the beginning stages of our accreditation process, so we've done a self-study and we're going to be looking at institutional assessment more um, more widely, what what exactly is the contradiction between the Mahara ePortfolio platform and what you are calling assessment? Um, 
I mean, maybe I'm not explaining this well enough, and maybe someone else can, but some of these other tools, live text, task streams, education, they're, they're built with more of an assessment focus. And so students are able to submit artifacts or pages to a back-end assessment area that, that can easily be evaluated by offices of assessment, accreditation, you know, middle states, or AACSB, or any other accrediting body. It's not to say that can't be done with Mahara. It definitely can be. It's just that's not really Mahara's strength. Of course, Nancy, I'm so glad that you're making it work. And, and we're making it work, too. But I just, if, if you're in the market for an assessment portfolio, I don't think Mahara, I think Christina would even object to me saying this, but I don't think Mahara is your first choice. I mean, Mahara has other clear benefits. And that's, we were driven to Mahara for other reasons. But now what's happening is we want to try to do do it all with Mahara, and so that's why this has been a theme that's come up um, in several of these meetings. And and uh, it's nice to see that Christina's one of her messages here um, that it's something that Mahara may be looking into, but still want to keep the you know the PLE personal learning environment aspect and the flexibility. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a tension. It's a tension with all, you know, there's no perfect e-portfolio platform. I mean, in all our e-portfolio research over the years, we've learned that it's um, different systems have different strengths. And so this is the challenge for e-portfolio users, no matter what they're using, is to try to use the strengths and then also address the weaker areas and perhaps build systems around the weak areas or methods of handling it. Um, and so what might be interesting for our mug group in the summer, you know, when we meet uh, at Bo in Boston or when we meet again online is to kind of share, perhaps Nancy, you can share a little bit more about how you're managing with assessment. And if we share some ideas among us, maybe we get some good strategies. Right. I think I understand what you're saying. We use it as an assessment platform, but the actual assessment tracking doesn't happen through Mahara. It happens. Um, yeah through a very sort of Baroque system that we've created and probably wouldn't translate to any other program. Right, yes. And so in other words, and I, I get what you're saying, like, you know, Mahara can be used as an assessment. I used ePortfolios as my student's final project in place of an exam. So that's a way of using Mahara as an assessment. But to use it institutionally, it, maybe it's not its strength, but, <laughs> but maybe Christine is putting it on the wish list as we speak. <laughs> yeah, and, and when I was at Manhattanville, we were just at the beginning point of adopting Digication, and they were they were set up much more like um, Mahara than at that. You know, that was about four years ago, um, mm -hmm. five years ago, and and it took them a while to figure out the assessment piece. They they were building it for us as we were adopting it. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's one of the, the, the things about Mahara that maybe we can contribute some of what our needs are um, for, for um, yeah. I'm sorry, someone's just coming in. That's great, Alan. And Christina, I'd be really interested in hearing um, University of Canberra and U of Brighton, um, if they're able to, you know, develop some assessment uh, workflows or any strategies for Mahara, that would be great to share it with this group. And uh, we'd be happy to test test some things out here at Pace. We definitely would have people interested in that. You know, we're ha we have a project starting this fall where they're looking for tools where students can collect, select, and reflect on their work. But a key part of that tool is they want a badging and credentialing and dashboard um, overlay for administrators. And so we're trying to make the case that Mahara can, is definitely that tool for the collection, selection, and reflection, but without that kind of um, the ability to have that overlay and assess, you know, students that are 60% complete, et cetera, or 500 of the students have met the goals. It's, um, it's, it's tough to convince some of the powers that be that, that Mahara is the answer to that too. Yeah, that's great. I, Christine, I'd love to maybe after this meeting talk to you more about the badging piece because we're we really would like to do more of that. Okay, good to know. I think we are about out of time, but this has been such a great discussion. So I hope we can um, 
communicate through the Facebook group and through email to get another meeting planned for summer. Any last comments from anyone? Um, yeah, just a plug for coming out here this summer <laughs> to Brooklyn. Um, yeah. Roger, I don't know if you can make the, the leap across the pond, but um, I'm hoping we can time it for when Christina is in New York. And I think it would be fun for us all to get together. Um, and donuts, yes, I promise you, donuts from dough. Uh, <laughs> the, the best donuts in New York. <laughs> Okay, that sounds great, Gail. Let's try to plan it around Christina's visit if we can, and um, that might that might work out well. Oh, and I guess Rob is vouching for the donuts too. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, Roger. We got to find some way to transport you here. Okay. Well, it's it's really great talking with all of you. Thanks. Um, special thanks to Keith and um, Gail and Christina and Roger for uh, taking time to share your screens and ideas. And um, I look forward to talking with all of you soon. Great. Thank you so much for hosting this. Oh, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>